Hey guys, with Valentine's Day right around the corner, I wanted to do a Shop My Stash Get Ready With Me Valentine's Day look. I have a vision in mind for what I want. It's gonna involve pink and red. I think pink and red are such a fun color combo for makeup and I'm just excited to play with some of my products. So let's go ahead and go through my collection, select some products together, and then we will come right back here and put them on my face. So first things first, I do wanna pick out some items from my current makeup basket that I'd like to use. So first up, I definitely wanna use my BH Mimosa palette. Um, I do have a vision for this eye look and I'm thinking it's gonna mainly consist of this shade kind of as a wash all over the lid maybe a little bit of the other shimmery pinks as well so i'm gonna pull that out i think for the lip i'm gonna use my urban decay lipstick in art walk this is such a beautiful pink for valentine's day and i think it's gonna complement the eye look well i'm also gonna go ahead and take out my foundation concealer and setting powder that are in here the elf halo glow the Kosas Revealer Concealer, and the Urban Decay Hydromaniac Foundation. That'll be my base. I'm also gonna use my ColourPop Super Shock Highlight in Monster. It's a duochrome pink color. It has just been perfect for Valentine's looks. So I think that's it for this basket for now. I might also grab my Hourglass Diffused Light Powder as well, just in case I decide to use that. But I still need a few other products from my collection. So let's take a look. Definitely going to grab my mascara, the Milk Makeup Rise Mascara, my eyeshadow primer, my brow pen and brow gel, the Urban Decay Brow Blade, and the Pacifica Highest Def Brow Set. And I think that's it for the top drawer. I think I'm also going to pull out my Smashbox Vitamin Glow Face Primer. Um, this is just a nice hydrating, smoothing primer. For a little bit of extra brightness on the under eyes, I'm also going to bring out my Becca um, under eye corrector in the shade light to medium. Please ignore the nail glue that I got on my fingers. I know it looks rough. I already have a concealer and foundation. I think I will also take out my Hollywood Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury to use kind of like on the high points of my face underneath foundation. Because a lot of the face products are glowy and hydrating, I'm going to use my Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray just to kind of help lock all of those hydrating products in. And I think that is it for this drawer. So I do want to pull out a blush. I'm actually thinking I want to take a little break from my Project Pan blushes that I've been using quite a bit lately. And I'm going to pull out my Undone Lip to Cheek Palette in the shade Dahlia. This is such a pretty pinky berry color that I think is beautiful for Valentine's Day. And let's see, I'm going to do cream bronzer or powder bronzer. I think I'm going to go with a powder bronzer from this drawer. Let's do the Milani Silky Matte Bronzer in Sunkiss. This is a nice kind of cooler toned bronzer. I just think this tone of bronzer is going to look best alongside pinks and reds. So I've already got a highlighter, blush, and powder, so I think that is going to do it for this drawer. So I already picked out a lip color, the Urban Decay Art Walk Vice Lipstick, but I actually am going to pull out another lipstick to use as liquid liner. So now you can kind of see where I'm headed with this. This I've used before as a liquid liner. This is the Stila Liquid Lipstick in Beso Shimmer. It's a metallic red. I just love the look of red winged liner. I just think it's so beautiful and unexpected. And I feel like Valentine's Day is a great excuse to wear red eyeliner. <laughs> so I am gonna pull out this lipstick, but not to use as a lipstick. And I think for the eyeshadow, I'm gonna keep the actual eyeshadow itself very similar with like some of the matte pinks from Mimosa. But I will go ahead and also bring over all of my pan those eyeshadows. Actually, I'm not gonna use the Charlotte Tilbury um, rose gold shadow. Um, I just don't think it'll fit with this look. But I will go ahead and bring over the rest of my Pan Those Eyeshadows palettes. We've got Shared Planet Polar Bear, Urban Decay Naked Wild West, Profusion Mauves, and ABH Norvina. I just like to have my Pan Those Eyeshadows out with me while I'm getting ready, just in case I decide to dip into some of the shades. Because um, a lot of these are very neutral shades that can easily be incorporated. All right, then we've got my little eyeliner cup here. And like I said, I'm gonna use that red metallic liquid lipstick as my upper liner. But I also wanna bring out my NYX Epic Wear Liner Stick. I love this. I talked about this in my drugstore products that feel high-end video. This is in the shade Rose Gold. And I think I'm gonna use this in my lower waterline just for kind of a brightening effect, especially because I'm gonna have red eyeliner on the top. I don't want that to make me look sick. So I think this will kind of balance it out, still make my eyes look nice and open and bright. All right, 
So that is everything. And then plus I've got my Pan Those Eyeshadows palettes here. I feel like that looks like a lot, but I think that covers everything. So let's go ahead and do a look together. All right, so let's go ahead and start with that Smashbox Vitamin Glow Primer. I definitely don't always wear primer, as you know, but sometimes it's nice. I'm gonna take just kind of like a slightly larger than a pea-sized amount and mainly focus that in the T-zone, just areas of my face where I have texture. For sunscreen today, I always like to tell you what sunscreen I have on. I'm wearing the Josie Marin SPF 47 sunscreen. It's a mineral sunscreen, so far really liking it. It's quite hydrating and glowy. And that's gonna be one of the ones that I include in this year's sunscreen roundup. So far this year, we've got a really, really strong lineup. Last year, there were a lot of terrible ones. There might be a couple of not so good ones this year, but for the most part, they're all really nice, so. And if you noticed, none of the products that I chose today are Project Pan items, except for the Pan Those Eyeshadows palettes that I brought out. Um, but a lot of times with these Shop My Stash Get Ready With Me's, which I like to do these about once a month, um, I, I like to take a little bit of a break from my Project Pan items, and I think that's a good idea for any of you Project Panners out there. Have at least a few days a month where you just take a break from your Project Pan items and use other things. It's just a good way to make sure you're not neglecting other products in your collection. So going in with that Urban Decay Hydromaniac foundation now. If you're hungry for more Valentine's inspo, I actually did another kind of like a Valentine's date night look over on my Patreon. So shameless plug if you want even more inspiration. I'll have that linked down below. I also did my Valentine's nails today. These are press-ons from Clutch Nails. They're my favorite brand for press-ons. These are probably one of my favorite designs I've ever worn from them. Some of their designs look a little bit, I don't know, just not quite my style. Like some of them really look like press-ons. I feel like these, out of all the ones I've tried, it kind of looks like I actually went and got my nails done and these are my real nails. I mean, I never have my real nails this long, but you know, if you didn't know that, you might think I went and got them professionally done. Really been loving this Hydromaniac foundation, especially as my skin has been quite dry the last few days. Keep going through phases where it's super dry and then it's back to normal and then it's dry again. But this is a really nice foundation if you've got like severe dry patches. It is quite a glowy foundation and it gets glowier as you wear it throughout the day, but it's just a pretty foundation. So then for this Kosas concealer that's also in my makeup basket, I have the shade 1.5C. This is a really nice concealer. I can absolutely see why so many people love it. I would say it is medium coverage, so if you are a full coverage kind of person, it's not gonna give you full coverage. But what I like about this, I think I finally am able to put into words <laughs> how I would describe this. I was thinking about this last night while I was like doing my skincare and I had the perfect way to say it and now I can't remember what I was gonna say. Oh, this concealer doesn't really sit on top of your skin, it becomes one with your skin. It literally looks like a second layer of skin. And I just think that's something that you don't find very often. It's hydrating, but it doesn't crease very much compared to other concealers. Like a lot of concealers, I can apply them like this and then maybe, you know, do my cream products, maybe wait a few minutes, five minutes later, I've got some pretty significant creasing going on, kind of like in those fine lines right under the eyes. But this one, it, it yes, it will crease slightly. It will kind of settle into those fine lines, but not nearly as much as other concealers and especially other hydrating concealers. So that's what I love about this one. I still love the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo as well. That one has a little bit more coverage than this, but this one is even better in terms of, you know, what I said about it, how it kind of just melds in with your skin. It doesn't look like it's a product that's sitting on top of your skin. So those are my updated thoughts on this concealer. So you can see, I mean, you can definitely still see my under eyes peeking through but on an everyday basis i just think this is one of those concealers that looks good in real life all right so next for this undone lip to cheek palette in dahlia really i use it as a cream blush although it is really pretty on the lips as well this is extremely pigmented so i just take like the tiniest dab focused in that top section because that's where it has the sheerest pigmentation and i like to apply that with my fingers 
Ah, I just realized I forgot to use the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless filter underneath my foundation. But I will go ahead and still use it as... I'm gonna still use the ColourPop Super Shock highlighter on the cheekbones, but this I'll kind of use as like my nose highlight in this area. Because this highlight is so skin-like, I can I feel like you can definitely pull it off on the nose because it's not gonna look like metallic or sparkly in any way. Just blending that in with the Sigma tapered highlighter brush. I don't really know why this brush is the one I grabbed for, but <laughs> it'll do. So you can see I've kind of gone around, done other things, haven't set the under eyes yet. And there's really, there's a tiny bit of creasing where it's settled into the fine lines, but it's really not bad and it's not anywhere near what the vast majority of concealers do. So, impressive. I feel like for that reason, if you are somebody who doesn't like to set your under eyes with powder, which, hey, we all have our differences, I will never understand that, but if you are one of those people, <laughs> Um, this might be a good one because it seems to hold up well even without powder, although it is going to stay, like it's not necessarily self-setting. It doesn't dry down to a matte finish is what I'm trying to say. I am going to take a little bit of that Becca under eye brightening corrector, just a little dab. I'm going to take some on each ring finger and just tap it very lightly on the darkest part of my under eye. That is the way I've found that I love to use this product. I used to not really feel like there was a place in my routine for this type of corrector but this is such a nice brightening product it, it truly brightens without being too light um, which I just think is a hard type of formulation to nail down so there's that I like what that does for my under eyes. Very emollient, very creamy. I know not everybody loves that texture, but I really enjoy it. Okay, so then I'm gonna set my under eyes with that e.l.f. Halo Glow setting powder. I've been loving this setting powder as well. This is, I, I can totally see why people love this. It is different from, I used to talk about the HD powder in Soft Luminance from e.l.f. And this one is different. I think this one is better, in my opinion. The HD powder in Soft Luminance had a little bit of shimmer to it, very, very light, tiny particles of shimmer, which I didn't personally mind. This doesn't have that. It's It doesn't have any kind of like detectable shimmer particles, but it just gives your skin this kind of soft veil without being too matte. Really nice formula. I like it for the under eyes and all over the face. All right, next for this Milani bronzer in Sunkissed. I'm gonna use my BH Cosmetics V2 brush. I love this brush for bronzer. I'm gonna take some right there and then just a little bit up kind of around the forehead. All right, then for my highlighter, the ColourPop Super Shock in Monster. I have been loving this this month. I'm so glad I decided to put this in my makeup basket. I mean, just, just watch, just watch. just gives the prettiest sheen and it's different from any other highlighter shade that I own. This was on my planning to pan list for this year and I do plan to eventually put it into my project pan um, because I have had it for a while. I'm gonna put a little on the bridge of the nose, I just can't stop. I may also use this as an inner corner highlight. I did that once uh, a few days ago and it was stunning, it was so brightening. Kind of similar to the shade Cube from Subculture, if you know. Like, it's got like a white but very sheer, basically transparent base and this uh, pink flip to it that's just so, so pretty. So, been loving that. Perfect for Valentine's Day. Just for the fun of it, I'm also gonna buff a little bit of the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in Diffused Light. I don't feel like this is a must. Honestly, I feel like the e.l.f. Halo Glow is similar anyway, but sometimes I'll just dust a little bit of this onto any part of my face that I feel like it, I don't know. Just kind of give the skin a little bit of a soft, almost filtered effect. Nothing too noticeable though, I definitely don't feel like this is a must for me personally. So then I'm going to put on some eyelid primer, the Urban Decay Primer Potion is what I'm using. And I'm going to fill in my brows with the Urban Decay Brow Blade. I have really been liking this product. Took me a little while to get the hang of it, but um, I feel like I'm able to get a very 
natural looking brow i'm able to just fill it in very minimally and still get the shape that i want which i just feel like is something you can't get from most other brow products so i like to use the pencil side i think i've shown this before but i'll say it again i like to use the pencil side in kind of the tail of my brow i do wish this this shade was just a teeny bit cooler but it works like cooler toned i mean it does pull a little bit warm. This is the shade Taupe Trap. And then with the ink stain side, I try to follow the direction of my brow hairs with this. Sometimes if you bear down too hard, too much will come out. So that, that's the part where you gotta, gotta kinda get the hang of it. But once you do, I'm telling you, it just, it looks so good. And you're really able to get true hair-like strokes with this, even more so than like a skinny brow pencil because of that fine brush tip. I still use my ABH Dip Brow Pomade as well, but for the front of the brows, I really like that brow pen. So uh, yeah, I am. I think I'm a brow marker convert now. And then to just kind of comb everything into place, I like to use a brow gel. This is the Pacifica Highest Def in the shade clear. This is really, uh, this is a very light hold brow gel. I feel like by the end of the day, it's like, it's, it feels like it's not even there anymore. But if you don't like a super crunchy brow, this may be a good one for you. But if you're trying to do like really feathery brows and push your brow hairs up and make them stay that way, this is not gonna do that. If you guys saw my video trying makeup techniques I never use, um, I did try the fluffy brow <laughs> technique with this and the hairs fell within like 30 seconds So, you know, it's fine for what I need it for but don't expect like miracles as far as hold with this I'm mainly gonna use the BH mimosa palette, which is in my makeup basket currently and Let's see. Maybe I'm gonna, I'll start out the look with this shade this nice beige color called we heart brunch I initially thought of this palette as a very summery palette, but then I realized with the pinks and reds It is perfect for Valentine's Day I'm just taking this on a BH Cosmetics V5. Okay, that's actually going on my skin a lot more orangey peachy than I anticipated. It looks very neutral in the pan, but okay. Just wanted to kind of lay that down as a transition color. So next I'm gonna go in with the shade Bottomless. Been using this shade a lot this month. It's just this matte pink color. And this is gonna be our lid shade. I kind of just want a soft, wash of pink all over and then just blending all of that out with that crease brush again all right really keeping it simple in terms of eyeshadows because i really want the liner to be the main statement today i'm hoping that this works <laughs> all right let's take a little bit of that ColourPop monster highlight i just like to take a little bit on my pinky and then just dab it into the inner corner oh it's kind of hard with my nail isn't that so pretty, the way that just brightens up the eye? I love that. I'm gonna take this little pencil brush and just kind of blend that. Kind of feel like the pink on my lid is looking a little bit deeper than what I was hoping. I mean, I know it's not super deep, but I was hoping for something just a little bit lighter than that. I think I'm gonna actually try mixing a little bit of this matte white called Chilled with Bottomless just to kind of soften it a bit. Let's see if that helps. Now it's more bubblegum pink. Mm, okay, I think that's a little bit better. Blending again. Time for the red liner. I did this before in my video about repurposing lip products. Um, definitely use this kind of product as a liner at your own risk. Um, I think the Stila ones are technically eye safe based on a quick Google search that I did, but I'm also keeping in mind that this is not a super old product. I haven't used it that many times. I wouldn't want to do this with like a four-year-old liquid lipstick, you know? Yeah, just wanted to put that disclaimer out there. I just picked some of it up on this BK Beauty 208, a very thin liner brush. And I think I'm just going to kind of have this be from the halfway point of my eye out. I'm not going to take it all the way in. Ooh, 
that was tough. I think that is as good as it's gonna get. Kind of like the left side better than the right side. Usually it's the other way around. Okay, I'm not totally sure if I love how this is coming together, but I'm hoping that once we get the mascara on, it'll all become cohesive. All right, I am going to apply some of my Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. I just don't like to get it in my hair. That's why I cover up my hair with a rag. All right, next I'm gonna apply some of this NYX Rose Gold Liner on the lower lash line. I'm actually not gonna put it in the waterline. Just basically lining that lash line. All right, next I'm gonna apply a couple coats of the uh, Milk Makeup Rise Mascara and hope that this kind of ties it all together. <laughs> uh, this mascara smells like raisins, which is weird. I don't think I've ever had a mascara that smells like raisins before. And then for the lower lashes, I'm using my CoverGirl Lash Blast Volume in brown, just because this one doesn't transfer or flake or anything. And the milk one is kind of flaky. Okay, so for the lipstick, I'm kind of thinking I want to do kind of like a sheared out blotted lip with this Urban Decay Vice lipstick in Art Walk. So I'm going to kind of apply some and then kind of sheer it out with my finger. So I don't want the lips to compete with the eyes too much. Okay, so I just feel like this look needs a little bit more blush. I'm not gonna use the same cream blush because I've already powdered my face. So I grabbed my Aether Beauty Amber Cheek Palette that's in my makeup basket. And I'm gonna go into this middle shade here, which is called Balance. And just taking a little bit of that because this is very pigmented. And I'm just gonna kind of bring out the blush a little bit more. I just feel like that's what this look needs. Okay, so that is the completed look. I like how it turned out. I think if I were to do this look over again, I might use a different pink shade on the lid. I might try a, like a slightly lighter pink if I were to redo it, but I do like how it turned out. It's definitely a very Valentine's Day. And I feel like recently I've done a lot of pink looks, but not a lot of pink and red looks. I don't wear red on my eyes very often, but it's a really fun color to play with. Or honestly, I might even just skip eyeshadow altogether or just do like a very nude shade on the lid and just have the red liner and the pink lip. I think that would also be a slightly more subtle way to do this look, but I had a lot of fun creating this look with you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it gave you some inspiration for something you might like to try for Valentine's Day. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you've not already. I've got a whole playlist of Shop My Stash videos. I love focusing on just using what I have and that's really what my channel is all about. So I'd love to have you subscribe if you've not already and otherwise, hopefully I will talk to you again very soon in my next one. Bye.